Today I'm going to do a video on some common questions that I get about pipe bending. Hi, my name is Kermit Schrott and I am the electrical instructor. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go over some frequently asked questions that I get, whether it be email, questions uh, or comments down below. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to go over a couple of the basic things. Um, so this way here I can give more of a video demonstration rather than just you know a written explanation because sometimes it gets a little confusing. I will do this periodically so you know if you're new to this channel do me a favor go ahead and hit the subscribe button ring the bell so you can be up to date on my weekly videos. One of the different things that I'm asked about pipe bending is you know shrinkage. I did a video on shrinkage a few weeks back um, if you want to go ahead and watch that and kind of get a little bit of a number you know go ahead and Click the link above. This way here you can watch that video, which will then carry you into the next step. Um, we'll, we'll go over that too. Um, at the same time, we're also gonna go over a couple different things. Over three of the most common questions that I'm asked about conduit bending. Most of it's about bending offset, so we're gonna talk about that. So we're gonna go over shrinkage. Now, here I have a half inch piece of conduit. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a four inch offset in this. So if you do the calculations, what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, I have four inches of rise. I'm going to take a quarter of an inch and I'm going to add it for every inch of rise I have. So four inch offset, one inch of rise. So that means that when I make my first mark, I have to add that one inch to it. Okay. So let's say for instance, I'm going over an object and my first mark is 10 inches away. I'm going to actually go 11 inches to make my first mark. Okay, so we all know that when bending an offset, I'm going to bend 30 degrees. A 30 degree offset is the multiplier is 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to me measure 4 inches. So I'm going to go 4 times 2 is 8. I'm going to make it an 8 inch mark. Now I am using Sharpie, so those of you who have had me in class and I always tell you, you know, Mr. M, don't use Sharpie, you know, don't use Sharpie, don't waste. It's more so because you ruin my dry erase markers. But we're going to use this for this demonstration so you can see it. So this one here is added my 1 inch because I want 10 inches here. And then this is going to be my uh, 8 inches in between because I'm going to bend 30 degrees. So now I still have my 10 inches, still have my rise. My rise is not what I'm worried about. It's the extension going over the top. We want to be able to continue that conduit going through. So my first mark is set here. My second mark is set there. Okay, my second question always is, is what happens if I overbend or I have, an, I have a closed offset? Well, what does a closed offset mean? A closed offset, when you measure from here to here, the same distance is not here. That means it's closed. My transit line is here, meaning that I have the right height pretty close here, but down here, not so much. So I always get the question, I've overbent it, how do I take it out? Well, it does take some skill. You have to pay attention to what you're doing. And it does take some practice, okay? Can everybody become a great pipe bender? Absolutely. The more you bend pipe, the easier it'll get. The more you understand how to fix little issues, the better pipe bender you'll be. Let me show you how to take this out. Okay, with your bender upside down, you're gonna see here, you'll see here, this is, this is what we call the heel, 
okay? And what I like to do is I like to make sure that my bend is sitting right on that. What do I mean? Well, I have to open this up. So I have inverted, I have inverted my offset, okay? We just bent the offset like this. Everything is good. I'm gonna pull it back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out from this bend. So what I'm gonna do is, and I'm gonna have you looking at me here. I've got to line this bend in line with everything so that when I take it out, it's even. I don't want to give it a dog leg, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to line it up. Now, once it's lined up, if I pull down like this, I'm going to put more bend in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come as close to this bend as possible. I'm going to put my foot down at the bottom of the base, and I'm going to bend it. The one thing you have to remember is you don't want to overbend it. You want to keep underbending it, and you want to do it little as a time, little at a time. If you push too hard, you're going to open that thing up, and then you're going to have to put more bend in it. The more times you bend the conduit, the weaker the conduit is going to be. You're going to ruin the integrity of the conduit, and you don't want to do that. Half inch, you use a little less muscle than you than you normally would. Half in, or three quarter and one inch, it, you're going to have to tug on it. Okay, and then we won't talk about inch and a quarter or anything like that because, you know, hopefully you're on a job where you'll have something you can pry it in there to get that thing to bend over because, you know, I'm telling you, I'm a big guy, but I can't deal with that all the time. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to look at it, make sure that this is parallel with this, and then continue to check it. How do I check it? I go right back to my, my line here and I find out that I have four inches. And oh, now I got four and a half inches. So seeing I have four and a half inches, one of the things I have to do is I have to put just a little bit more into that bend. So what am I going to do? I'm going to slide it back into the bender the correct way, putting my mark on the arrow, making sure my conduit is in line so it doesn't dog leg, and I'm going to press down. Remember what I said, very little pressure. Take it out and measure it. And that's how you take out, that's, that's how you open a closed offset. This is how you open a closed offset and make it parallel. Making it parallel is the key. You wanna make sure this is perfect. You wanna make sure you look at it and you're looking down and it's not dog legged. Unfortunately, while I'm looking at this, looking in the video, it looks like it's a little bit crooked, but it's just a camera angle. Okay, two questions have been asked. Where do you bend on a three-point saddle? Where do you start the first bend? Where do you start the second? And where do you start the third bend? Well, if you watch my video up above, okay, my three-point saddle bend, you know, I give you a demonstration on how to do that. The, one of the biggest questions is, what do I start with? Well, your center bend on a three-point, three-point, your center bend on a three-point saddle is going to start on your notch, okay? This here is your notch. This is your star. This is your notch. You're going to start on the saddle notch. So, slide the conduit in, bend it down, bring it to 45 degrees because on a three-point saddle, it's 45 degrees for your first bend. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it forward. The bend, because you've already made your marks, your second bend or your second bend mark, and it'll make more sense when you watch the video, you will go on the arrow, okay? We'll go on the arrow. So you wanna make sure 
will go on the arrow. You want to make sure that you bend the second and third bend on the arrow. So the first bend is going to be on the saddle notch. The second and third bend will be on the arrow. You always want to make sure you keep the bends in front of you. So that means when you bend the saddle notch, you slide the conduit forward to the arrow, bend the second one, take it out, flip it around, keep those bends in front of you. Okay, this is the front of the shoe when you're bending it down this way. Keep those bends in front of you, put that other, the third line on the arrow and bend it down. Questions that I get consistently. There's a lot more things that I can do with this. And if, you, and if you enjoy it, if this helped you, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, do me a favor, please subscribe. Our channel is growing uh, tremendously. So, you know, keep up the good work. Keep sharing my videos. I really appreciate it. Leave me a comment, you know, but I really do hope this video helped you. So I'm going to do more videos like this. The more likes I get, the more I'm going to want to do more of these kind of type of videos. If you have questions that you would like to ask me to answer in video form, do me a favor. You can send me, you can email me at sparkyinstructor at gmail.com or you can leave me a comment down below. And this way here, I can put a whole list together and I'll do a couple of videos, even if it's just a couple of short videos. So if you haven't subscribed, do me a favor, subscribe. Again, I'm going to say it. If it helped you, hit the like button. And always remember, have a great day and be safe.